but I was happy at, uh, happy to read today. Actually, some good news, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The 9-11 first responders, the victims fund for those who got sick yes. from cancer mm. as a result of 9-11 finally has passed the Congress. Oh, it is wow. now 2019, 18 years after the attacks of 2001. Mm -hmm. And finally, finally, the United States government is going to fully fund for the next seven decades at a cost of $10.2 billion. Wow. That they're gonna fund this over 10 years, but mm -hmm. the fund is gonna carry through seven decades to help pay for the costs, the illnesses, the pain and suffering of the 9-11 victims and the people who came after them to save them and the people who came after them to clean up. Good. Lawmakers Good. passed the bill with very few uh, spending constraints as a promise to survivors, their family members and advocates that they would no longer have to go to Washington DC every year to beg for money. Fantastic. So finally it's going to the president to sign. We expect the president to sign it. And, uh, and you know, if one person, it's named by the way, after mm -hmm. three people, uh, who, who died, uh, who were advocates, mm -hmm. uh, Detective Aww. James Zagroda, Firefighter Raymond Pfeiffer, and Luis Alvarez. Uh, they were all named in the legislation. They all died. They wow. were all down there at 9-11, yeah. helping wow. after the attacks and during the attacks. But you also have to say a big kudos, a big thank you to John Stewart, the comedian yeah. and social My commentator. He, he worked tirelessly, this guy, to get it done. And, you know, I have nothing but positive, positive things to say about him. It's crazy that yeah. he's like one of the only ones who did really use yeah. their, you know, yeah. their platform That's for that. Correct. Yeah. You know, it's great when you see people use their platform for good. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And he's come out of retirement multiple times to right. speak on this issue for the yeah. past several years. Yes. Like this is not just one celeb globbing onto an issue. He's been really passionate yeah. for a long good. time. Yeah. Good. Me meanwhile, there's a big thing going on in Hong Kong right now. Oh my God! Yeah. This is now, crazy. so now, if if you you know know a little bit about history, is that Hong Kong was like the number one trading supplier to the world mm -hmm. during the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It was actually a British protectorate. Mm -hmm. The British owned Hong Kong. And in 1996 or 1998, I forgot, late 90s, yeah. they gave back 97. Mm -hmm. I was close. I said 96 and 98. Right. And Jill says it was in fact 1997. I split it in half. Well done. <laughs> um, they gave Hong Kong back to China on the promise that Chinese law would not take effect Mm -hmm. for at least 50 years, that Hong Kong would still be a free society, mm -hmm. Hong Kong would still have a free press, freedom mm -hmm. of speech, and the people who live there would be living under what was former British law. Right. 20 years later, mm -hmm. China is starting to encroach into Hong Kong. I was just in Hong Kong. Right. Mm. Okay, it's a really beautiful city, it's very clean, very nice. It's huge, huge malls. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever likes to shop, I am telling you, I have never seen so many malls in my entire Your life. Boy right here. So, so what's going on now? Hong Kong has kind of transformed themselves from a manufacturing center because the manufacturing center went to China, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's actually being moved to Vietnam because the U.S. and China are having a trade war right now. But, ch but Hong Kong has become the financial capital. Of, 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 of Asia, mm -hmm. well, one of them, and certainly is the financial lifeline for China. Mm -hmm. It's like the Wall Street there of, 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 the, of Asia. And now China has come right. and said to Hong Kong, we're going to pass a law, and the law is that if you're wanted in China for a crime, mm -hmm. Hong Kong will extradite you to China to right. face trial. Right. So what does that do to Hong Kong? Now, anybody could be wanted in China for right. a crime. It basically stops freedom of speech. Absolutely. And any, any enemy of China in Hong Kong can now be extradited to China right. as a result because uh, and face Chinese law. To and, and there have been hundreds of people who have disappeared in Hong Kong, booksellers and journalists who oh, disappear what? at the hands of the Chinese government. Right, and they're not even supposed to extradite yet. Right. Right. So you would understand then 
why the tra- why the Hong Kong police are saying that the criminal gangs are are protesting. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you're a criminal gang, you wouldn't want to be extradited to to China. You want to face trial in Hong Kong. Right. And if you are an ordinary citizen, you want to be able to speak up for your rights and be able to speak up for your freedoms. And as a matter of fact, what's going on in Hong Kong now is actually people don't realize it. It's very similar to what happened in Tiananmen Square in 1989. People are standing up for their rights. And if this law actually passes and becomes law, then basically that's the end of Hong Kong as a free society. Wow. Because the Chinese government can take you whenever you want if they don't like you. So meanwhile, what happened was is that the law has been postponed. Right, yeah. They have not, that is where we're at now. The law has been postponed and we don't know what will happen. But basically, right now in Hong Kong, they're fighting for their freedom. Yeah. And you gotta leave it to the British. Why would they do that? It's just, it's a- They, 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 they didn't have to do that. It's a very weird agreement. Yeah, why mm. did the British do that? That of course is gonna like, how, how could you not see that it was gonna cause so much strain? Leave it to the, leave right. it to the British yeah. to screw it up. Yep. Like the rest of the world. Okay. I, th- I yes. think that Especially I think that's a Africa. lot of the the difference between the pro Beijing and the pro democracy camps in Hong Kong right now. It's really crazy to see yeah. to see those protests right. turn violent like that. Now, now Afghanistan is asking Donald Trump. He met with the Pakistani. Is it the prime minister or the president? Who's the head of Pakistan? I guess it would be the, the prime, prime minister. minister, Imran Khan. Yes. In the Oval Office on Monday. And during that meeting, Pakistan and the United States have been kind of rivals in Afghanistan for 25 years. If you remember, right after the 9-11 attacks, George Bush told the then prime minister of Pakistan, you're either with us or against us, Mm -hmm. and we're going to war against Afghanistan, and we may go to war against Pakistan too, unless you're with us, because Pakistan has a lot of control. They're their neighbor of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So Pakistan ultimately came to the side of the United States, although they probably were working both sides with their, throughout, if you go back in history for the last 20 years, especially with their Secret Service. Nevertheless, right. and, and where, where did we find Osama bin Laden? Right. In mm-hmm. Pakistan. Right. Nevertheless, mm-hmm. nevertheless, the Prime Minister was in the United States to meet Donald Trump, and they were discussing the future of Afghanistan, and Donald Trump said, if we wanted to fight a war in Afghanistan and win it, I could win that war in one week. I just don't want to kill 10 million people. <laughs> I have plans on Afghanistan that if I wanted to win that war, Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be wow. gone. It would be over in literally 10 days. Oh, wow. But I don't want to go God. that route. And we have that video. Let's watch. I could win that war in a week. I just don't want to kill 10 million people. If I wanted to win that war, Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be gone literally in 10 days. Oh, wow. right, so, my God. So, that is insane. So, you know how the only way that you can wipe Afghanistan off the face of the earth is just drop like 15 nuclear bombs right. Right. on them. So, was he suggesting that he thought about dropping nuclear bombs on Afghanistan and wiping out the entire population? Is that what this man was suggesting? I think that's exactly, like, the way he pictured it, the way he painted that picture Mm. was, I have a little folder on my desk that says nuclear plan for Afghanistan. Yeah, so Mm. that's very scary. Yeah. It's scary not only that he has a plan, Mm -hmm. it's scary that he would announce it. Right. It's scary that it it would even be a thought process in his head. It's scary that out of a hundred ways to deal with Afghanistan, Mm -hmm. that would be on the list. Absolutely. Right. That shouldn't even be on the list. I wonder if he ever goes back and says, like, damn, I shouldn't have said that. No, Like, does he think before he speaks? No, all of of his staff is like, damn, what the hell is he saying? Oh, a hundred percent. But he walks off like, you know... He's like, you know, he's like an idiot savant, you know? Golly. I don't even know what he knows could, what he's saying. Could you thinks imagine he, thinks he knows what he's saying. Could you imagine being on a staff, like, yeah. constantly like, on the edge yes. of your seat waiting Every for single what's going to fly out that man's mouth? So Sadiq Siddiqui, mm-hmm. am I pronouncing this right now? Sadiq Siddiqui, mm-hmm. the spokesperson for the president of Afghanistan, Afghanistan said in a statement, the Afghan nation has not and will not never allow any foreign power to determine its fate given the multifaceted relationship between Afghanistan and the United States. The government of the Islamic Republic of, Af- of Afghanistan calls for clarification on the United States president's statements. They want to know what they mean, what he means by you can wipe us off the face of the mm. earth. And of course, nobody nobody has said anything That's a from the United f- States. Fair he just question. threw he just kind of threw it out there. Nobody said yeah. anything back. Now, during the same meeting with the Prime Minister, Trump also claimed that India's Prime Minister, 
Narendra Modi personally asked him if he would like to be a mediator in the decades-long conflict between India and Pakistan. Oh my God. Uh, but the Ministry for India said no such request was ever made. Oh, so God. Donald Trump <laughs> Donald Trump has said that I'm gonna be the mediator between Pakistan and, and India who are rivals. They have nuclear weapons right. you know, pointed, pointed at each right. other. Okay, and nobody says that, nobody ever asked him to be the mediator. And now he, he basically said in a news conference on an offhand comment, I could nuke the hell out of Afghanistan, but I just won't. What is wrong with this man? Meanwhile, on Tuesday, which is today, yeah. mm -hmm. the Trump administration is starting a new regulation on expedited removal for people who entered the country without inspection. Mm. Let me explain what this is, folks. If you don't have, if, if the US government, Department of Homeland Security, in the past, up yesterday or the day before, mm -hmm. comes across you somewhere in the United States, and you cannot prove that you are in the United States for more than 10 days when they come across you, they say you just entered you're still in flight that's what the regulation says and you have never made a legal entry into the united states and therefore we're going to put you in expedited removal which means that you don't get to see an immigration judge Jeez. you don't get to make any claim to be able to stay in america basically a department of homeland security officer an ice officer could literally nab you bring you down to the local ICE office and put you on a plane back without anybody reviewing any of this. Do not pass That now. is what's called expedited removal. Got it. It's what happens when people get uh, get in the airport and they come with fake document uh -huh. and then they turn them around 12 hours later without ever seeing a judge. Mm -hmm. So you see yeah. that a lot at the airport. And what the law said up to yesterday was, you're here in the United States for 10 days, uh, you can't prove you've been in the United States for more than 10 days. It's like you're at the airport. It's like we caught you at the border. We're just sending you back without seeing a judge. Okay. Now Donald Trump has changed the rule as of today. Okay. If you are co contacted by ICE mm -hmm. or you come into contact with ICE and you entered the country without inspection, you did not come here with a visa, uh, and you can't prove that you've been physically present in the United States for two years, it's now expedited removal. Two years? Two years. Whoa. So it went from 10 days to two years? Correct. So I'm just thinking about like, what happens if you enter the country without inspection and you applied for asylum? Right. Right. Because you have to apply within a year. Uh-huh. Is that now expedited removal as soon as you apply for asylum? Because you have to apply oh, within, wow. they, they make you, they force you to apply within a year. Mm -hmm. But let's say you run across the border, you make it here. Okay, well I gotta apply for asylum in a year, but if I apply and I show I'm here, then they're gonna deport right. me. Oh. So it's like, it's a lose-lose. It's like. a lose-lose. <laughs> yeah. So this is obviously, when you think about it from that perspective, yeah. yeah, a violation of the Constitution because you have a right to apply for asylum. You have a right to have a hearing. It's something called due process. Due process is all over the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Due process means that you have a right to a fair hearing before the US government takes anything from you, puts you in detention, sends you home, takes your money, takes your property. It's called due process. Due process means I'm entitled to a fair hearing before the US government Fs with me. In right. whatever area it is. Right. It could be immigration, it could be taking my property, anything. Right. Before they take take my taxes, if I if I want to grieve my taxes, that they're taking the taxes incorrectly. You have a right to due process. You have a right to a fair hearing. If you get arrested mm -hmm. for, for a criminal case, you have a right to due process. You have a right to a fair hearing before they put you in jail. This is the only time, the only area of the world that now that if you're here in the United States for less than two years and you came without inspection, there's no due process. Wow. wow. No fair hearings allowed. Wow. So Ooh. that's as of today. Now, Omar Jadwat, who is the director of the Immigrants' Rights Project at the ACLU, mm -hmm. American Civil Liberties Union, said, under this unlawful plan, immigrants who have lived here for years would be deported with less due process than people get in traffic court. We will be suing to end this very quickly. And I'm sure the ACLU will be doing that. Uh, less due process than traffic ticket. Correct. That is truly unlawful. That is very true. And that is a true statement. Yeah. Uh, so last Sunday, mm -hmm. the numbers are out. Jonathan. Okay. Last Sunday, Donald Trump, remember, ICE raids, ICE raids, we're going to deport 
millions and millions of people. I wish we had that quote. Uh -huh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Remember, he was going to deport millions and millions Absolutely. and millions of people. Right. And yeah. then he says, I'm going to postpone it for a week. Right. Because they, I told you, because they can't do it. Right. But, but then he got pressure that he had to do it. Right. So he said, folks, the ice raids are coming. We're doing it. We're going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deport everybody. Right. The ICE operation last Sunday targeted 2,000 people that they wanted to pick up and deport. Okay. They got 35. People? After everything. 35. 35. 35 people. Like three, five people? Three, right. Yeah, about the same amount of people we need to subscribe to YouTube. Right. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Like 10, 000, right. All right. That's who they arrested. That's what they arrest in a regular day. Right. Right. Okay. How is that a different That's what they arrest in a regular day. So, at, so the huge ice raid turned into we got 35 people. Now, I'll tell you where Trump gets you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll tell you where he gets you. He gets you with the rhetoric, and he gets people so scared that they're going to pack up and go home. Right. That's what I it was. bet that's what it is. And people are packing up and going home because they're petrified. I guarantee you thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people packed up and went home yeah. Yeah. because Trump petrified them that the ICE raids that they're going to come arrest a million people on Sunday. He got more people because he petrified them to go home, basically bullied them to go home. Right. That he didn't actually catch right. him. Right. And he knew that's what he was mm -hmm. going to do. Because it did scare a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We still get questions today yeah. on the show about that those right. tweets. Meanwhile, I don't know if you saw in Tennessee, Ice, Ice, one of the people that Ice went to arrest on that Sunday was in Tennessee. I don't know what town this was in Tennessee. Just and outside Nashville. Right outside of Nashville. And the people, uh, the people who were witnessing Ice come to arrest their neighbor says they don't need to arrest this guy, he's a good guy. And they formed out of just pure humanity. It wasn't, it was not done with pre-intent. Mm -hmm. Just out of pure humanity, they saw ICE coming to arrest their neighbor and they formed a human chain. They formed a oh, human wow. chain around the car oh, the and, wow. and, and, and did not allow the ICE officers to go into the wow. car, to go into the car to arrest them and allowed the person to go into into their home. Now, if you remember from watching some of our other shows, mm -hmm. where can ICE go and get you? They can't get oh, you, in, can't get can't you, get in you the inside the car, yeah. Yeah, and they can't, and they get, they can't you get you inside your house. Mm. So if we watch this video now, the human chain allowed the person who was staying in his car mm -hmm. to jump out of his car quickly mm -hmm. and go run in the house before wow. ICE can grab him wow. with his 12-year-old son. Right. Okay. So remember, ICE, these ICE warrants, mm -hmm. unless it is signed by a federal judge, which it, it is rarely, which it rarely is, mm -hmm. these ICE warrants are warrants that you can, that are, cannot be enforced inside of a car, inside of a workplace, or inside of a home. Liking the guy a little more today. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's unexpected. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I don't like him. Mm -hmm. I go back and forth. I'm hot and cold with him. I he's the governor. Why. He's the governor of New York. But today, the state of New York is the first state in the entire country to ban revenge porn. Oh, that's yeah. the first to ban, state. To ban revenge porn, the first state. It what? is not it is not banned anywhere else. How so is revenge that porn is is when you post a picture of either somebody naked or in, having sex against their will. Mhm. Mm that they didn't agree to it. Right. And it is done to cause emotional, financial, or physical harm to the person. That's what the law basically says. You can't post an intimate picture, a naked picture, a sexy picture, a picture uh, of somebody having sex, whatever it is, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're doing it in revenge to cause emotional, financial, or physical harm to a person. So, so when this, so this happened to a celebrity, uh, Tierra Marie in California, and I remember that they did try to, and also Black China, they did try it's and say, to a ton, yeah. well, I mean, it's happened it's to a lot, Lawrence, but I'm saying yeah. just like recently, they were saying, you know, but, but, it was revenge porn. Yeah, so. but if the person, if the person posted in California mm -hmm. and then steps foot in New York, they would get arrested. Good. Even though it wasn't ah. even posted in New York. Good. Because it's seen in New York. Good. Right. 
So, that's so, but so I mean, you post in California, you're disseminating it in New York. Mm -hmm. You just New York long arm can't reach to California, but if you step but foot if in you New step York, foot in New York, they would arrest you. Wow. I yeah. don't understand how this is not already right. a law. This has been revenge porn has been a thing for years. Yeah. There are entire websites. There have been countless women whose lives have been absolutely ruined. It is absolutely a form of sexual assault. I don't understand how this is taking so long. Because the men who run our country don't care. Okay. Right. And there okay. Okay. That's that's basically it is. That's basically it. That was a very easy answer, <laughs> and there Belgium. It is. Yeah. And there it is. All right. And that's why you need to elect more female representatives. Uh, have you ever been down to the Georgia coast? St. Simon's Island. It's very pretty down there. Jekyll Island, St. Simon's Island, and there's one more island. It's very pretty down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Near Fort, isn't that near Fort Sump? No, that's South Carolina. That's South Carolina. But no, it's all very pretty down there. there. Well, there was a bunch, over 30 whales beached themselves on St. Simon's Island. Oh, my God. It's a barrier oh. island right off of Georgia. And, uh, and a lot of good Samaritans went out and one by one brought the whales back Aww. out onto the ocean. And it was a really nice thing to see, and they saved over 30 whales. Wow. Unfortunately, two two died, but, but over 30 people literally got off the beach. Aww. They were just vacationing That's to carry the whales back, back into the ocean. And and finally, oh, well, no, that's not a finally. We Almost finally. Okay. Uh, we're in Sotheby's oh my God, in New York. Oh, my God, look at those people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sotheby's uh, in New York, and they were helping. That's very nice. Yeah. Sotheby's in New York is having the first of a kind sneaker auction. Yeah. Uh -oh. Now these are not any sneakers. These are Jonathan sneakers. Uh -oh. The most coveted sneakers in the world. Oh really? No, 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 no. <laughs> they are. They are the most coveted sneakers in the world. I don't think you have any of these sneakers, oh, okay. Jonathan. Nike, Adidas, Air Jordans. There's one Air Jordan where only twelve were made. Mm -hmm. And that one is expected to... The moon to, shoe. Yeah, the moon shoe. The moon shoe. The moon shoe. Yeah. Only 12 were made in the world, and it's expected to earn over $160,000. Now, another highlight is two pairs of Nike mags inspired by Back to the Future. Right. And it was made to raise money for Parkinson's disease. The auction also features a pair of size 9 Nike Air Jordan 2 blue suede Derek oh. Jeter shoes made to commemorate the New York Yankees icons 2014. Buyers better act fast because the auction started on Thursday and 99 of the shoes have already been sold. Crazy. A Canadian entrepreneur uh, by the name of Miles Nadal purchased a lot of them for over $850,000. Wow. He purchased all of them. Oh, all of them. Except one pair, and that moon shoe is actually breaking news as of like 20 minutes ago. The one that was expected to go for $160,000 yeah. actually sold for $437,000. Oh but you can't wear ago. them because as soon as you wear them, then you lose the value. No, right. and if you, we have a picture, I think, or two of them. They're really janky and jagged, but they're one of the very first pairs that the Nike co founder made right. with his own two hands with his waffle iron. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. And finally, there's a lot of important world championships this week. Okay. That I would be remiss if I didn't go if through you them didn't quickly. Go through them. Poga Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is taking place right now in Pittsburgh. It is the world championship of pogos. Oh. What it, how do you win the world championship of pogos? It's an extreme pogo stick athletes from around the world come to show off their huge tricks and flips to compete for world titles such as best pogo trickster well yeah look at I, can you imagine pogo doing a palooza on a pogo stick yeah I also, can't pogo. yeah also in finland we already discussed this but we'll discuss it again is the heavy metal knitting championship oh yeah right remember that oh so several yeah. months ago we told you about that and but now but now it is happening and people are going on with such we have some video people are going on with such stage names <laughs> wow. as wolf fumes bunny bandit and nine needles I they can't. are playing heavy metal and knitting <laughs> it is the world heavy metal knitting championship <laughs> and lithuania belgium kim yeah I'm glad I am not married right now. I'd break my back yeah. if I was married and living in Lithuania wow. because it is the wife-carrying competition week <laughs> in Lithuania. Uh, a <laughs> Lithuanian couple won the World Wife-Carrying Championship oh for a second time in a row. It's in a Finnish town. Oh, it's not in, it's not in Lithuania. Oh, it's a Lithuanian it's couple, but it's in a Finnish town called San Kajarvi, and it's men pick up their wives and run with them through obstacles. 
It's the 24th year, and, and pr preliminary, preliminary champ comp competitions are held all over the world, and these are the best of the best from the United States, Australia, Poland, Britain, and Europe. Wow. That's the best of the best wife carriers. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Also the grand prize. The grand prize <laughs> is 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 beer <laughs> exactly weighing your wife's weight. <laughs> your wife's weight in beer. beer is an awesome prize. But wait, can your I, I don't understand why the prize goes to the man. Because getting carried is not that easy. Well, yeah, yes. Right? She's, she's like a ball almost, right? Yeah, like she's like, she's got to do something too. Why does he get a big mug of beer and she well, gets doesn't, nothing? Doesn't she get to, doesn't she get to well, like, sure drink, she like she drink together? Yeah, I, I, assume, drink I assume they get to drink beer together. It's I'm, not like it's, you know. I feel like it should be the husband's weight in beer. That's yeah. probably A, more beer. And two, he did most well, of the heavy you never lifting. know. You never That's true. know. <laughs> That's true. With me, we would get way more beer if they got Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.